that FOMO of everyone else moving at a certain speed, everyone else doing things at a certain level, and you're not just there yet. The FOMO kicks in. You're impatient. And that's it. You're doing things without doing the proper due diligence. What's up, everyone? How you guys doing today? Welcome to another episode of Family Man Building a Brand Podcast. I am your host, Cecil Williams. And I'm Raphael Say. Awesome. So welcome today to another episode. Today is called the Framework episode. And we'll explain to you why we call it the Framework. So as we develop this podcast, Family Man Building yep. a Brand, it's to kind of, well, it's not kind of, it is to tell you about the experience, the entrepreneur's journey. And as Ralph and I were discussing and trying to figure out exactly what this journey would be based on our experiences, we decided why not give the audience a journey into the entrepreneurial uh, the entrepreneurial journey in the form of a framework. So it's essentially what we or most entrepreneurs have had to go through yeah. or break through in order to launch and scale a business. So we decided, okay, we're going to turn this podcast journey into this framework where we will help our audience and we will also talk to experts and other people who've been in this journey, who've been battle tested, yep. who've gone through almost this exact framework. And this will hopefully help new entrepreneurs out there or people who are stuck in certain levels of that framework and what they need to do to get to the next level. So that's what today's yep. um, episode is going to be all about. I'm excited. Oh yeah, definitely, man. And, um, you know, like Cecil said, when we when we started this podcast, we wanted to be able to help you guys and help out everyone um, in a more streamlined fashion. And what we did was take our personal experiences and map them out and map them into different phases. And obviously, the first phase, Cecil, was really the mindset. Uh, we can go over a lot of different things in regards to mindset that helped strap us to move on to the next phases of entrepreneurship. Yeah, while we were in it, we didn't really, you know, notice it. But looking back at it now, um, it all started with the mindset. And Ralph, before you even go to the mindset, I, I kind of wanted to give the audience, I mean, since we talked about a framework, it's a five-step framework that we developed. And the different five steps before Ralph gets into the first one, which is mindset. Five steps are mindset, foundation, launch, growth, and mastery. And I mean, just to kind of give you a brief idea of what it is, it's like mindset. This is just what it takes to get to the next level in entrepreneurship. We'll define it deeper. Rap is going to talk about a lot about it. Foundations is your, it's kind of like if you're building a house, the house needs to sit on a good foundation. So if you're building a business, that business needs to sit on a good foundation, business structures, registration, all the different things that you need to get your business off the ground. Then you have your launch. I think for us in this phase, launch is where we talk about money. This is where we talk about what it takes to take your business to the next level in terms of access to funding, making sure your personal funding, your personal credit, your personal your personal finances is, is in place to be able to take things to the next level, which then you get to growth. Growth is where you get to really build your brand and assert yourself as a business owner. This is where you utilize marketing. Marketing in today's world is building your online presence, social media, whether it's Yelp, Google, whatever, a website. All the different elements of building, even if it's a brick and mortar, just how you grow your business and some of the fundamental things that you use to grow your business. And then mastery. Mastery is scale. This is now what people do to scale their business, to take it to the next level where they set certain standard operating procedures, where they hire people, where they just literally do everything that it takes to scale their business to get it to the next level. So these are the five steps of the framework that we designed. And this is the, this is the journey we want to take out our audience through this podcast. So all our different episodes will kind of touch on these different parts of the framework every time we interview someone or when Ralph and I discuss certain aspects of the family uh, man building a brand journey. Like we said, the first the first phase of this is definitely going to be your mindset. Uh, for anyone new or for anyone that's already in business and, and operating, um, I'm sure you face some of these, but in this phase of getting your mindset right, I'll discuss what you will feel and what's necessary to correct that to then move into the next phase of, you know, growing your brand and moving into um, the different level, the next level of your business. And in mindset, the first thing is going to be a lack of self-belief. It, de it depends on where you're at in the beginning of your journey, uh, whether you're extremely confident 
or whether this is something that was sounded like a great idea. You're not too sure how it's going to go on. The lack of self-belief definitely sets in, but it's okay. You know, there, there's ways to go around that. There's times where you're going to need that coach, that mentor. Um, there's times where you will need to seek that advising of someone that's already experienced that. Uh, sometimes you believe that the goal is not achievable. Uh, Cecil, I remember we went through that a few times when it came down to um, us actually producing the right amount of product. Um, it, it sounded overzealous, but we did have to, you know, it, it was scary knowing that we were going to produce so much product and could we really sell it? Would people really like it? All those doubts, all those different things come into your mind. I mean, it even starts with launching your business. I think the lack of self-belief, that is like the number one stumbling block where people don't believe in themselves and if they don't then they don't start i mean you see so much stuff on the internet about mindset and they normally say it is one of the most overlooked part about entrepreneurships because it's that process where people get to believe in themselves to start something i mean once you start then i think you force yourself to accountability and in this phase generally that's when people are like all over the place and they have weight i mean because we all have ideas I have a great idea. I have a great idea. You keep telling people, but until you execute on that idea, it is just what it is. It's a great idea, you know? And, and then also keep in mind, Seth, within, um, within this phase as well, too, let's say things do go well on that initial part of this phase. You know, why Seth's right? You're confident, you're energetic, you're motivated. And now, you know, all these things are coming your way and you know that you have the wherewithal to tackle them but then what happens, you become a jack of all trades is a lack of focus. So that can come, you know, it, it's okay to be energetic and move forward, but within the mindset phase, it's going to have to definitely be a focus that's put in. And to be realistic, I think we've learned enough that being a jack of all trades is great as far as diversification, but without the focus into that one trade, that one or two trades, you probably come out with a minimal result. So, that's a caveat in regards to this as well, too. Yeah, I think it, you, you touch on a good point with the jack of all trades. It, it, I think when most entrepreneurs start, they are jack of all trades. Because when you're starting a small business, especially if it's just you or your business partner, you have to do everything. Now, there's the jack of all trades who has to do everything because it's, the, it's what they have to do. It's necessity. Necessity is the mother of invention. But there is a time where you have to start separating because... I mean, that idea of FOMO, because sometimes people become a jack of all trades because they have a fear of missing out. They want to do everything. So it becomes rather than like, let's say you start a clothing line. Somebody tells you, hey, tomorrow we're going to be selling books. Then you want to start selling books with them. So it's like you want you 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 want to dip your hands in everything just because you fear you, you, you have a fear of missing out on making money, fear of missing out of saying, hey, I wrote a wave or, or whatever the case might be. But I think streamlining your business or your ideas and saying, I want to perfect a skill. Now, even when you perfect that skill, you're going to have to wear many hats. So there's a difference between the jack of all trade and the person who wears many hats until they can get the necessary help to build that business themselves, you know? In, in this phase as well, too, you're totally right on this, Seth. And, and this, this kind of brings me to, you know, be impatient at that phase. Um, there was times, Cecil, where we had to, we had to be patient enough to get the result from the task that we just completed a week ago. And that FOMO of everyone else moving at a certain speed, everyone else doing things at a certain level, and you're not just there yet. The FOMO kicks in, you're impatient, and that's it. You're doing things without doing the proper due diligence. You're doing things without having the correct foundation of things. And now you're really just moving all over the place even more. And, and, and what what hurts in that phase, Seth, is when you do go through those aspects. What really hurts is when, you know, you get scarred one time and then you build a fear of commitment now. Why? Because I committed myself to this. You know, I was all over the place and all that stuff, but I didn't get the result that I wanted. And now I'm fear I'm in fear of doing that again. That one shot, I'll just give up and move on to the next part. Yeah, I, I think that's the, what it is. I, that's the thing with entrepreneurship. You have to be willing to fail. Everybody just wants to succeed. And social media contributes to that because we only sometimes see the successes of other people. But the truth is, most people have this fear of commitment, so they don't want to take the next step. And 
sometimes that fear of commitment even comes from success. They don't want, they don't know what's they they fear success, but sometimes it's the fear of failure itself. The like you said, I think you said people put in all that work and it doesn't pan out as they would like to. So then they say, well, I'm not going to put in this work again because I'm afraid that I will fail again. But you have to keep failing for you to succeed because the, the sum of your your experiences and your failures will determine or would lead um, to your success. So, I mean, realistically, if you can figure out your mindset and figuring out your mindset doesn't necessarily have to be you do it yourself. I think for us, Ralph and I, we had each other. So there was a lot of things we figured out ourselves. Like, I mean, I'll throw an idea his way. He helps me figure it out. And we do it till today, back and forth. So we help each other out. Now for other people, I think getting a, a coach and a mentor, and and I say this, but don't get stuck in that world because I we both had coaches. And I think coaching is like your professor in, in the classroom, if you want to take it that to whether it's elementary, high school, college, or whatever. They're there to guide you but they're not there to get you to the promised land. You still have to put in the work and execute on what they tell you to do. So that's how I want people to see coaches. They're guidance. They're not the end all be all who's going to, I mean, being in their presence allows you to access to so many things because they've done it. They've been there, but don't get stuck in the funk of thinking it's your coach or mentor's responsibility to take you to the next level. That's not their job. They're just there for guidance. I, I agree, man. You know, and um, a, a great thing that helped us out, Cecil, back then and even now today, uh, were books. I remember you always had a book list and you would always shoot out books. And there are certain books that I read that stuck with me that I could never shape, you know. Um, and there's there and nowadays, Cecil, instead of books, there's there's videos, there, there's podcast episodes on um, their motive. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube. You know, all those things help build my confidence, especially, okay, so now, for example, Seth with the franchise, you know, moving into that phase, Seth, there were a couple of books that I did have to read and why I didn't think that I could achieve such a feat, seeing videos of people that have done it and giving me mapping out the exact steps really helped a lot too with that mindset of saying, of, of building that bulletproof mindset of saying, you know what? Get strong now, get strapped up now because you're going to take this journey. You're going to get that result. So I think books help. I mean, I was a big, I mean, advocate and I'm still, I'm a big fan of Gary V. And when he started writing his books, um, I would read his, his, his books. Um, and I'll share those books with Ralph and I'll buy a copy and that type of stuff. I mean, yeah, you, see you put back, me on right? Gary V back in 2008. Oh, yeah. I, I have I'll never forget. Books, Think and Grow Rich. I mean, and it yep. depends for the different things that whatever I you're trying you. to accomplish. I mean, some of them are motivational books. Some of them are just mindset, self-help books. Some of them are specific to whatever you're trying to overcome. I think um, right. a lot of books will help you get there. So read. I mean, I yep. listen to a lot of podcasts these days. And um, sometimes it's 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 about the journey of the entrepreneur. So you kind of hear right. what they have had to endure, what they've had to go through. And it's right. reassurance to kind of let you know you're on the right path. And um, oh, yeah. sometimes it gives you ideas to to help you get um, to the next level. So, I mean, oh, most people say not. they do the affirmations. I, I'm not that guy to be very honest. And maybe I'll get there one day. But oh, they work. It helps, yeah, they whatever. Work. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, exactly. So for you, it works. I have heard on a daily things. basis. Hey, I mean, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I think it's it's for positive reinforcement for the mind. And we're talking yeah. about the mind. We, yeah. Trust me, it takes a very tough mind yeah. to build, to go through these phases of what needs to get done of to, course. to succeed and, and, and to get to that level where you build, because the goal is to build a successful business that can sustain yourself, your family, and your community. Essentially, that's what we're looking for. And for me, I always say financial independence. Um, Oh yeah, you waking up in the morning and uh, you know you're just in a negative funk. Things of that sort. Mental affirmations are definitely going to be the thing to let you know rebuild that confidence, get your mind right to go out and tackle everything that the world is throwing at you. Especially first things in the morning. Makes so, sense. So for me, working out in the morning kind of gets my okay. day. So these are all mindset building exercises. So yeah, it helps Gosh. me with 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 getting my day started, putting me in in a mode. Because I mean, now your heart rate faster you're yep. energetic you have yep. all this um just to go conquer your day so people take right. mindset don't neglect the, the mindset it takes to actually jump into a business and then obviously as you 
built that mindset and you're now in the space to get to where you need to you have the foundation this is phase two this is probably one of the most important phases in starting your business specifically because at this phase is where i mean you do everything going from your business plan and i'm not talking about the 50 page business plan it's not that's what you want to do we're talking to a small business owner mompreneur that pretty somebody who has a great idea they want to execute on there's what is required to turn your business into a legit business the proper structures that you need to put in place to start up and i think um most people lack the knowledge of what it takes yeah. to get to that part they lack the direction they yeah. they feel overwhelmed because boy i mean ralph and i have been in business for royal dining like 12 years later and till today we are still finding out things about legal structures and businesses that we yep. haven't set up or parts that we weren't even ready to, to level up to just yet. So, I mean, yep. it, it's a lot of work. Um, because you're trying to get this right and because you're actually aiming to implement and, and, and follow what you're seeing these infiltrators online are telling you to do, uh, that yeah. make it seem so easy, you know, where you're saying, hey, one, two, three, and you guys can achieve this and that. And once you, you know, you're going to give things a shot. In entrepreneurship, um, everything's not going to come in your first shot. I, I, yeah. I, I pray that it does occur that way, you know, for you. But um, the odds are that it doesn't. And when it doesn't occur, when it doesn't go your way that first time, and you tend to get frustrated. You're not getting the results. You tend to get yeah. frustrated. Um, you tend to feel overwhelmed. That's that's another big thing. You feel overwhelmed at this level of building the foundation. Yep, lots of pressure. It's a lot. I mean, it's a lot because I I would say, I mean, in 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 our case, like if you go back and listen to maybe our second episode of the podcast, Ralph and I had this moment where we talk about eighteen months into building Royal Dynamite. He has his first son. He has his um, wife, and you're having to build a business, a, a new business while you have family. So. I mean, not in his specific case, but for most people, depending on where in the journey you are, you could have a lack of support from your family, your community. So there's a lot that you have to figure out in this foundational phase or having to find the right support system to build your foundation. Now, as we go deeper into that foundation, I think what people have to understand before they even start, you, you need to know what you want to do because you don't start a business and say, I'm, I mean, yeah, you try things, but. If you if you zero down on an idea and you say okay I want to open um uh I want to sell burgers now there's a, tons of burger joints out there so you still need a mi- mission vision marketing because you need to figure out who you're going to sell burgers to and the 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 faster you actually niche down on who I've always said this to people it, the marketing finding your target audience and your niche is the most single most important thing any entrepreneur can do to set themselves on a path to be successful because in college classes, I remember my professors used to talk about, in marketing classes, used to talk a lot about marketing and target audience. And I'm just like, well, you could sell to everyone. Why sell to five? But the reality is if you find your audience, they become your community. They become your advocates. They tell more people about you because they're a believer in what you do and you share a common belief. Essentially, you make, you solve their problems. So if you can solve their problems, then you have the solution to what they they want. Then they keep coming back and they will find other people just like them versus if you just keep throwing a stone out there and hoping that, well, hey, if it falls on someone, they'll turn around and catch their attention. It doesn't work that way. So you need that mission and vision. And I mean, Ralph, like it's crazy because um, in, in, in the business structure side of it, I mean, like you said, I think you mentioned people have these checklists that it makes it so easy online but i mean when you're setting up a business like coming up with a name then going and registering it with i mean there's the state level there's the, the federal level there is your your licenses all these different things man <laughs> it's a lot of work it, i'll tell yeah i mean it, it is a whole checklist and i mean we'll get to the we'll dive into the checklist later on we'll help give you guys some things to later, but it's interesting with the checklist. I mean, if you like, I'll I'll say this today: the world is more simple, regardless of what people think, because of the internet. When we were registering Royal Dynamite thirteen years ago, I remember having to pick up the phone and call these different entities, and they'll tell me where to go. So I had to go to the courthouse in Bellflower, 
to register the business name. And then they told me I had to publish this thing in a newspaper. So the, the guy was outside. Yeah. And he said, oh, I could publish for you for whatever, 60 bucks or whatever. And you have to wait three weeks until they send you a letter. And then you have to go get the licenses. So you have to call the different places in California. So all this stuff had to be, I mean, I'm not, it could have been done with a computer where you're probably paying companies a lot more money back then than it, it costs today. But we had to learn how to do these things ourselves and figure out how to do it so we would forever be able to do it regardless of what entity or what structures that we need to put together. When we opened our bank account, we had to take our, like our signed agreement as business partners. We had to walk into a Bank of America branch and and sign it in front of them, open up. I mean, these days you can open a business account by filling information online again and just doing it and just picking the right banks. I mean, now picking the banks that are going to be business friendly, the banks that are going to be focused to you, cater to your needs based on the business you choose. Correct. Um, the bank should be totally aligned or, or, you know, totally aligned with your interests. It's a relationship that goes back and forth. Not, no, I'm not only just looking for a bank account and I want to build a relationship with you. Hey, you do fund a lot of startups. You do fund a lot of real estate investments. You do fund a lot of these things. That's the bank that I want to go with and build. So I agree on you. I mean, exactly. So I think you, you have to follow all these things. And I mean, foundational level is, is you, you have to make sure. I mean, I think one of the things I always tell people as a small business, because we have been there and done that. Once you get your legal structure in place, you get your banking structure in place, you want to get your money affairs in order. And that's really in the growth phase. But what I'm saying, you need to get your money affairs in order. You need to sign up for something like a QuickBooks. That's all part of your foundational level. You need to sign up for something like a PayPal because you don't want to mix your money, your personal finance and your business finance. So you need to make sure at the most fundamental level you have a way to collect payment from your customers so you right. don't mix them up and you want to be able to record this stuff from day one because when yep. Uncle Sam comes for you, they're ta- always going to take theirs. So you want to make yeah, sure you can sure. save. You want to make sure you can write off things. You want to make sure you can account for where you spent your money um, properly. So I, I think, yep. um, and as we go into the foundational level, I think there's also that, needing support because at this foundational level a lot of people who you are probably around a similar team they have nine to five jobs they don't know what you're doing so it's strange for them they, it's difficult for them to support you because they don't know what help you need so oh, i yeah. think with this five people like-minded people man I, i've joined i've joined mastermind groups uh and i've networked with uh, uh people of like-minded people that provided me resources to help me with the issues, what mindset to help me with the issues within, you know, um, building the foundation of my business. Um, and, and, and Cecil, I, I joined different masterminds that help with different aspects of my business. So, for example, I joined the tax mastermind just to get, just to move around with like-minded people and gain resources and, and rub elbows with people in order to help me save on taxes and do the right thing structurally, you know. I've joined I've joined masterminds that focus strictly on social media just because I wanted to be with like minded people that were going through the pitfalls that I was going through while building my brand socially and grabbing their resources and providing resources to them as well, too. So those are two, you know, those are two masterminds. I mean, even real estate. That's uh, I joined Springboard to Wealth with that when um, just to network with real estate professionals that provide me resources. And those things help me save a, a ton of money in. Most importantly, a ton of headache um, and, 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 and what anguish. What I was going to ask, to like, what's the, what are the benefits, what's been the benefit of that to you? Um, the main benefit of, of, of joining these masterminds is that, one, mindset-wise, it let me know that I wasn't the only one going through these issues. That helped a lot, Matt. That helped a lot mentally. Um, it let me know that I wasn't on the island by myself. And if they were able to get out of it, I am able to get out of this rep as well, too. Um also, the resources in there are tried and tested. Uh, Seth, as a as a budding entrepreneur, or an entrepreneur, as a as a family man building this brand, time is of the essence. So, if if this mastermind group has already gone through a lot of the issues that I potentially can go through, and they're able to cut that lead time down in half, 
hey, that's a great benefit to myself, my family, and my community. So those are the benefits of me joining that master. Makes sense, people. So just like you said, in the foundational phase, you need to have a mission, vision, I mean, what, a strategy, a plan. You need to figure out what your business structures are legally. I mean, different entities. And you can, I mean, we'll talk about this as, as, as time goes on the podcast, but I think you also need a support group. You need a support group, whether it's, if it's not coming from a battle, you just need to find people who are going to be able to support you in doing what you do to bounce up ideas, to make you feel like you're on the right track, to ask questions to because they're ahead of the game, or they will ask questions to you because you're ahead of the game. And being around people who know, who, who are all uh, looking to a common goal to achieve entrepreneurial success, it, I think it's reassuring and it builds your confidence. So uh, I think those things are important. And as you kind of then go, and we got to we get to like level three or step three of that framework, which is then launching your business now, Launching your business is kind of an interesting thing, and we use that. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's a critical phase because I say this is where you go get the bag. <laughs> this is where you build an established business. Um, this is where you have that product, that service to present, present, you know, to to showcase to your audience. And this is where you grab in the funding to reach a massive audience and expand the business. And then, so, launch. This is where it's at. I mean, with, with the launch, I, I think. As as you're building, I talked in the last one, like the foundational phase where you have to separate your, your your personal versus your business. And I think at this phase, you should be in the process of building properly because I think as entrepreneurs, I, I personally don't think you can succeed as an entrepreneur if you do not figure out your personal finances, your habits, because habits is is what entrepreneurship is all about. It's the habits you build, the discipline you build, the sacrifices you make. And if you're going to make sacrifices for your business, the one thing you're going to need above all else is money. Whether it's your money, somebody else's money, you need to figure out how to spend it. You need to be tight with your money. And I think this part is where we figure this out, where I, I think first in, in this particular phase, it's helping people figure out their personal finances, making sure they earn, they understand their earned income. They have, they budget, they save. They, 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 they get out of debt if they have, which most Americans do. And obviously they invest that same framework that applies to your personal life will apply to your business. You're going to make money or you're going to invest your earned income in your business. And you have to make sure you budget properly for your business. You can't just go spending. We've had those moments where we just spent wildly on things and then you realize like, I could have been profitable, but I spent all my 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 initial expenses on maybe wanting to do too much with my marketing budget or wanting to do too much with these um, graphics and all these things. So maybe I took my profit margins that could have been 30 percent to 15 or maybe I just wiped out my profit because I spent unnecessarily on things that I wasn't wasn't watching. So I think this is the part where you um you don't know where to find the money. You're going to have to figure out where to find money. You you probably have bad money habits that you have to get together. And I mean, credit, your business credit, all these kinds of things. So Exactly. And, and everything that you can listen out, says of knowing where, I mean, you know, finding out where to find the money and having credit, things that sort, separating business, personal from business. I think the audience needs to to really pay attention to the order of operations of these phases and this framework, you know, in order to truly have a successful launch for longevity, the structure has to be right. Separating personal from business from the very beginning, you're not going to be using your personal bank account to fund business expenses, nor will you be bringing in business income into your personal account and expensing to expense by so, so the framework is key. The order of operations is truly key. Start with structuring up the business correctly so everything that Cecil just listed is going to continue unless you don't have to have that issue with. Again, guys, we went through this in the past, but we learned from it and we got out of it. And the goal is to teach you guys how to do it the right way. This is a key step because co-mingling funds, I mean, it, it, Cecil lights you up with the IRS, throwing up with Sam comes in and... and, and you wrote things off. You know, you're seeing all these videos of people writing off G wagons and and, and, and um, cars over 6,000 pounds, but since the structure wasn't really right, they wrote that car off, 
But come to find out the cash was actually hitting their personal accounts. Personal wasn't a business expense. So this is very key, guys. I just wanted to make sure I hit that nail on the head as well. I will say when we started our D in 2010, we have we, we opened a business back 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 account. And in the 13 years we've had that business, we never called me funds. That was one discipline that I'm proud of, of Ralph and I. Like we never we never like, oh, let me just take this card and go do whatever I need to do because we have money in there. Or let me miss like nah, we didn't put personal just didn't, we didn't just dump personal funds in there. We didn't just take money out of the business to go do whatever we needed to do. We never did that. And, and it always helped us when it came to tax time. It always helped us because if you have to switch accountants for whatever reason, CPAs, like it's easy for them to have a clean book of records. So you are just basically handing over what they need and they're making things very easy um, for you. But like the other thing is um, building your credit. I think in America, especially in America, credit is everything. It allows you to leverage things. I mean, personally, for you to get a car, you to buy a house, for you to get credit cards, for you to get anything, you need credit. So you need good credit on the on the personal side. And as a result of you building good credit on your personal side, it also allows you, again, leverage into the world of business credit if and should you need it because now your business is growing. You're making money, but you may be... Uh, you're getting paid quarterly and you have employees who have to get paid every month. So you need to leverage business credit. You need to, you need access to cash flow to pay your employees because yes, maybe you build, you got a hundred thousand dollar check coming, but that hundred thousand dollars only comes every quarter, but then you need $20,000 to pay. Now you can leverage your personal credit to get business credit, which eventually will allow your business to establish itself to utilize business credit to grow. Now, I always say there's a lot of stuff about business credit out there, but the real truth and the real use of it is for you to be able to leverage it for cash flow reasons because you're already making money or have something that you know is going to make money to be able to scale and expand your business. Now, I mean, I also think um, for me, I, I have this article that I wrote called The 9 to 5 Entrepreneur. For anyone looking to start a business, you are your first, I mean, ultimately you have to invest in yourself, but you are your first investor. You're going to bootstrap your way more than likely to start a new business because it's not proven until you do something and nobody's just going to give you money just because you have an idea. So, I mean, if you're working a nine to five, I'd say you're going to be your first investor. Put money aside, discipline yourself, save and put money aside into a separate account to fund your businesses. That's what Ralph and I did when we started RD. We put five hundred dollars in and we kept investing. I mean, that was just the start, but we kept investing money into the business until we could until we had a proof of concept, as most people say, a viable product or viable business enough for us to go raising money from outsiders, friends, family. And then eventually you go through the angel network, you go to the small business. I mean, we've been able to leverage all those things whether it's the banks, whether it's the small business loans, grants, whatever. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. It, uh, I mean, Seth, it's also important to state within this phase now of launch where you're going for the money. Um, group economics is a real thing. Uh, group economics, you've seen me implement a few times in, 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 in different investments. Um, and what I would advise, what, now, what is group economics? Group economics is gathering up funds uh, within family and friends and you pulling those funds in order to invest. Yes. In order to invest it to, uh, uh, to make an investment. And from there now you can pay your investors off or pay that group off and then continue to move forward in regards to that group economics is a way, um, of still seeking funding. If you don't have the great credit in the beginning, you can't get the business credit because you can't personal guarantee the loan things of that sort. Then you resort over to group economics. You know, friends and family are going to have that empathy, Cecil. You know, uh, strangers, that angel network, if you aren't fully strapped up and things do go south, they're not going to be as empathetic with you um, in comparison to your aunts and uncles. Yep, and they're going to be a little bit more empathetic. So group economics in this space is key. Um, there's ways of structuring up this, ways of properly structuring up the agreements and contracts between you and those friends and family members, because at the end of the day, 
friends and family, a lot of people don't want to mix. Yes, exactly. But business is business. So even if it is your mother, you're going to get that agreement down packed the right way. So where everyone is protected and that way there is no bad blood down the line. Well, Steph, I mean, you, you kind of, you, this is why we keep stressing is you build these structures. Everything needs to be, I mean, we have experienced the good, the bad, the ugly, but we need to emphasize that if you need to build these things properly, you need to make sure you have a paper trail because it, these things can sour grapes between you and you and your family, you and your friends. And I mean, you don't want to go take money from someone and then pretend as if, well, say, or use it against them that way. Hey, you didn't sign a paper to do whatever the case might be. So structure up. I mean, structure up, raise your money, make yourself your first investor, the 95 investor, if that's the fact. I mean, trust from baby, hey, whatever. But make sure you, um, you utilize yourself to invest in yourself, whether it's in your education, in your business, and then go to that personal finance, personal credit, personal um, money, then your business. And then you can go up the food chain now of raising money, crowdfunding. I mean, there's crowdfunding websites where if you have a business, if you have a story to tell and you think it's strong enough, put it out there and let the audience, let the customer even pay you or give you the funding before you could start. I mean, there's so many um, businesses out there that are using these platforms to raise hundreds of thousands, some some millions, and they're not having to go to these very stringent structures of angels and venture capitalists. And if that's where your business is going to take you, then that's where you would go. Because at the end of the day, whatever it takes to scale to get your business out to the masses and solve people's problems, that's what you're going to follow the money. And wherever that takes you, that's where you're going to need to go. And then as you're going, now you, you're established, you've got your business, you've got things going, you need to grow. I mean, growing is where I think everything about the word brand says this is that this is that rocket, yeah, that 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 incline here. This is when, you know, yeah, you utilize the marketing, the branding, all those strategies to take the business to the next level now. The foundation, Your foundation is, set. is set. Right. Foundation is set, says so you can build on top of it now. You take all the skills that you've been, you know, perfecting and you're in these masterminds. You've gathered all the resources and all those things now. This is when you take everything and you push it out in order to take business to the next level and then experience that exponential growth. So um here's one there should be a growth in revenue. Um there should be a growth amongst your network, Cecil. Even amongst family and friends, remember back to some group economics. Uh, once you once you've had a solid investment with one group of family or friends, trust me, that next round you got more aunties, uncles, and cousins coming your way in order to flip the <laughs> right you FOMO, man. You know this is when your delivery and quality says it's all point. You know, and, and says let me let me give a let me take an example back to that sweater you're wearing with Freetown. You know, I want to say. We we launched Freetown. Um, we launched this black on black collection, Freetown and War. We launched it five years after World Dynamite's inception. So, guys, five years it took us to get to our point of exponential growth, where we had a campaign where we raked in five figures in less than a week. We had a campaign where social media, all our marketing was on fire. We didn't, I mean, I'm talking about all systems of go. And back then, social media was different, guys. We didn't have IG videos. I remember IG videos came. Yeah, it was a lot more work and things of that sort. So, you know, we built so much that we set the foundation. We went through all these, these prior phases. We got our mindset right and all those things. So when the growth phase came, we were kind of ready for it. And still, even at that point, it kind of went more wildfire that we can control even though we, we did our best and, you know, we did, ain't, you know, we did get the result we wanted, but that's, that, that's, that's one time within business for me where I can say that growth phase was real. And that's why it's honestly part of the framework. I mean, I think the growth is the brand, you, the brand you build, whether it's, if, I mean, your personal brand or your business brand, I mean, it's an interchangeable one in the same, especially when it comes to story, because your personal story it influences your business story if you, if you choose to tell it, which I encourage you to tell it. And I think once you, you, you grow, this is a part where people have to understand marketing and social media being a very um, 
key piece, central part of, of, of that system in today's world, because for small businesses, for entrepreneurs, mompreneurs, dadpreneurs, social media almost gives you a level playing field because we cannot run ads on TV. We cannot afford to put billboards and, and all these different things. So social media, your Facebook, your Instagram, your TikTok, your Twitter, your, your LinkedIn, and all these places that have given you a voice. They've given you a platform for you to be able to put yourself out there so people can know who you are build your online presence and in turn grow your business. But I'll 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 a word of caution to people is it's it's a it's a very it's a long process. It's a process that needs dedication, time, sacrifice, and patience. Because don't think you're going to come and go viral like everybody else you see. Those people you see going viral, they have put in work. There's a guy called Nas. He he publishes a newsletter called Nas Daily. And um he said he set out to create content. And, and today he has a, a, a company, Nas Daily, which generates like $11 million. And, but in order for him to get there, he said he set out to make a, vid- make a video every day for 1,000 days. So that's 2.7 years of making a video every single day. And he said he didn't get traction until almost when he got to 600 videos. That's when he started really gaining traction. So imagine what it takes to make video number 100 and you'll only probably getting views from your mom, dad, your brother, your sister, or whatever. So he had to stay consistent because he had a goal. He had, and he said he gave himself very little room for him, like, well, like to make mistakes. He had 24 hours to make improvement. So which means every day it was improving. That's another thing I like to stress about growth is you're not just going to make videos for 1,000 days and hope that you do the same thing every day and, and you're expecting different things. You have to find a way to improve. You need feedback. You need to watch other people who have gotten to where you need to get to and keep making these iterations and get to and just grow man. and just but just do it. So I think um, putting all these things in place to make sure you get to where you need to get to. I mean, for, for us, the, the growth has been an important, like Ralph said, launching um, Freetown, which became a brand. It became such a big brand. It was bigger than the original brand, the clothing brand itself, where people then used to just think Freetown was a separate clothing line from Royal Dynamite. Some people didn't even know what Royal Dynamite was. They only knew Freetown because we built this brand that I always say one of the reasons we built this brand was this brand was connecting with a specific group of people. And it's always important to make sure as you build something, it is solves a problem. Our problem was in solving an emotional problem, an emotional connection to certain people that made them feel nostalgic, made them feel a sense of belonging, made them feel in a, within a community. And they wanted to be a part of that. And we, we provided a means, a vehicle by which they could get to express themselves to becoming a part of that. And, and that's the, the systems that we needed to put in place. So make sure you are building what you're personal brand is properly in the growth phase. As you've grown, put all your systems in place. There's all these places you can go, your website, your, I mean, there's so many things we'll talk about, your social media systems. There's a lot of things in, in, in the growth phase that we will explore with other people and ourselves as we talk about this. And once you've mastered and conquered that, then you get to phase number five, which is the final phase of this um, journey, which is mastery, which I think, um, like Ralph said, your rocket ship is going on, but mastery is when you give it that boost. When you press that, like like Fast and the Furious, you press that NOS gas when you're on the last mile and your car just takes off and you win the race. Like, that's what mastery is. Like, I mean, this is everything about your standard operating procedures. Everything you've been learning, you have to make sure you have documented them and it's not just sitting in your head. Because this is where you scale. This is where you hire people. This is where you take your standard operating procedures and teach people. This is where you are now able to go get way more money, raise money, seed money, whatever. If you see rounds of funding, or this is where you're taking the money you're bringing in to just scale the business faster and really get to that next level, man. So, I mean, Seth, as an entrepreneur, I feel like I feel like that growth is that that rocket, you know, and this is when. So, Seth, you're right. This is when you're on that last mile. Sit back in your racing seat and push the button. Hang on for dear life and we're all the way out of here. You know, this is that point. This is when all systems are in place. This is when all people are in place. VAs, accountants, 
um, um, bookkeepers, everybody. This is what your legal structure is set. This is when your S- your SOPs are fully built out and, and fully, you know, organized in a drive in order for people to 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 revisit in order to properly manage the company. You know, this is when, you know, this is when you lean out the operations and you cut all the fat. This is the part you see on IG that everybody is accomplished and they're flexing on you. Now, we talked about how they got there. And the interesting thing is we're going to be talking to so many people who have gone to the mastery phase, but we're going to let them tell you how they got there. We're going to let them peel back the layers to say, these are the things that I, I've done. Because I think because we built this, this, this audience journey, we want you to understand how people got there learn from them so you could do the same things as well to be able to build your business. I think the mastery phase is it's you don't get there if you don't follow these the four steps that come before it. You don't get there if you're not mentally tough. You don't get there if you don't execute properly. You don't get there if you don't do if you're not persistent. If you're not I mean if you don't make the sac necessary sacrifices to get there because this is like for business, I always say bi- Business is like it's life, but it's it's a game. It's a game in life that the ultimate goal is to succeed. It's to succeed primarily financially for you, but at the same time to also solve somebody else's problem. And I think if you're solving people's problems, then people will give you that financial success that you need. That's what business is. I mean, it's not a nonprofit. It's not charity and all these other things. So ultimately, your goal is success and not success because I would say. In education, when you were in school, success wasn't about making money. It was getting an A grade. That's success or a B grade. It could be whatever or passing the class. So, But in business, financial success is what it is. I mean, if you look at publicly traded companies, they're measured based on how much money they make, how much profit, how much revenue, nothing more. I mean, <laughs> their products solve problems. Apple, the phone we're using, the headphones, all these things solve problems. But ultimately, their success is measured by how much money they make. That's what your success has been measured by personally and outward, you know. Right, and and, and that success also on um, one key, one key factor for new, young, existing, old entrepreneurs in this phase is the ability to pivot. At, at this phase, as you're leaning out and you're cutting the fat, and and you know you're 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 slow to hire, but you're quick to fire. Things of that sort. This is that phase where you don't be afraid to pivot. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people are afraid to pivot at this point because, oh, you know, in the beginning, you know, I had to focus in. That's fine. But you took the business all the way to this level now. And if some things are not working, this is when you pivot in order to keep what you built continuously generating. So especially that you're putting people now in that structure. I always say the most difficult commodity resource to manage processes it'll take time but you figure it out and once it once you repeat a process enough it becomes second nature you do not figure out human beings because a human being is never going to act the same way every single time or day so you can hire an employee and maybe for five days they they even develop certain patterns and you're going to even notice like oh this person's acting the same way every day something must be up and then maybe day six, they just don't show up to work and they tell you they're sick. You don't know what's going on. So human beings are the most unpredictable resource in this whole equation. So you want to make sure you're patient. You you you're, you have, you, have, you have empathy. Figure things out because you have to be able to replace, put pieces in place, make sure you train properly. So if maybe if that person can't be, you can fill in. And, and, and once you are able to do these things, then it becomes a well-oiled machine. It's never going to be perfect, but the train's always going to keep moving because you have built something that um, maybe doesn't even need you to be there. But that's that's a process to get there, but that's the goal. I mean, um, so, yeah, I mean, I think hopefully you guys found this process very useful of um, what it takes for your audience journey in the family man building a brand. Like I said, you dad premieres, mom premieres, you young entrepreneurs, you new entrepreneurs will probably just tie to your nine to five and you have what it takes, but you need to make that transition into becoming uh building something new, whether you're passionate about it, it's solving a business. Get your mind right, step one. Build your foundation, step two. 
launch, get the bag. Step three, growth. You start get that rocket ship starts taking off in mastery. Step five, that's when you press the NOS gas, fast and curious, and you're going forward now. And uh, once you are able to do these things, I think that's the life cycle of your business. Then um, you can retire. <laughs> Or at least you get the financial independence, in my opinion, man. So, yeah. So now, well said, man. Um, uh, the audience could look forward to us breaking down each of these phases in one way or another well via these episodes and can be able to learn a lot more. And, of course, as we go along, we'll have more resources, checklists, and things of that sort to provide them to help them out with this journey. So this has been great, so. Man, this has been awesome, man. Knocking this out and just hopefully the people find it beneficial and um, we can do more of these things and keep going, brother. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your time. Let's knock it out. Thank you guys very, very much for listening to this episode of the Family Man Building Brand Podcast, the framework, as we like to call it. And we look forward to listening to more of our episodes. Go and check us out. Follow us on all the different platforms. Family Man Building the Brand. Check it out. Thank you guys very, very much. We appreciate you guys.